Hi, it's Bonnie. Um, this video is going to be about ethical harvest. There is a goose that is very loud behind me because a swan is chasing it. Uh, but I just want to talk about like ethical harvest. Um, so first of all, if you've watched any of my um, videos about plant identification, I have reminded you that you have to get um, multiple sources to help you ID um, a plant before you should ever consume it or harvest it based off my videos. Um, <clears throat> that's just smart. Um, I don't suggest plant ID apps. Um, if you use them, they can kind of get you into the family of the plant, but we know that plant ID apps have messed up um, like poisonous look-alike situations. So don't rely on them completely. Um, what I would suggest is that you, um, you know, take a book um, out into nature and use my videos and, um, you know, another source. I'll show you my um, books that I recommend. And, um, yeah, so I've talked a little bit about in some of my videos about, um, I guess this will be more than ethical harvest. I'm going to kind of go on a rant, but um, <clears throat> you have to think about what you are where the area that you're at that you're harvesting from if you do end up making sure that you can id something 110 percent correctly um right now like i said there is a pond with um some geese and a swan on it right behind me maybe it's a lake um but it's surrounded by condos and houses and um, a small airport now i wouldn't feel completely comfortable harvesting something um that is like real close to this water because i just don't know the quality of it especially with it having condos that have you know very manicured lawns uh, there's more than likely pesticides in the water um, and there's an airport that's like like I can see the strip right now so that tells me that there's lots of um, environmental you know pollutants that could be an issue and I'm I would be better off probably just finding the plants that I want to harvest somewhere that's not by this water if possible um, I am in a county park right now um, and um, generally the rules, you would have to check each um, park or area that you're in. Generally the rules are in like state and county parks, city parks even. Generally the rule is that you can um, harvest mushrooms um, and berries. Um, some parks don't really have um, rules, but the, you know, the common Michigan state parks, their rule is generally mushrooms and berries. Now, I know lots of people that harvest a lot more things out there um, and have never had any issue. But, you know, it's important to know, um, it's important to know the rules of where you're at. There are areas that it's illegal to harvest anything. There are also plants that it's um, illegal to harvest them or maybe they're at risk. You can check um, United Plant Savers um, website. They have a lot of information about which plants are at risk, which plants um, are endangered. And, um, you know, oftentimes if we're uh, harvesting something for its medicinal properties, um and it's at risk we could probably find something very similar that um that has similar qualities that isn't at risk so um we don't want to get in the mindset of um i need this particular plant to solve whatever it is that i'm dealing with um 
that isn't really a holistic way of looking at using herbs to support your body. That is a more of a like pharmaceutical approach. Like I have this going on, so I need this. Um, plants are very complex and they don't fit in a box like that. And um, there's lots of plants that have overlapping qualities. And um, they also have their own energetics that are important to factor in too that I'll probably talk about more um, in some videos. But um, when it comes to ethical harvesting as well, we don't ever want to, do, um, if we walk up to a patch of plants, we don't want to take more than a third. That's a general rule. Also, if it's the first patch of plants that you've seen or the first plant that you're looking for that you've seen, we don't wanna take that one because what if it's the only one, right? Um, uh, what else? Um, it's also important to know if there's toxic or poisonous plants in your area. So um, I just made a wild strawberry video and it um, had poison ivy like right next to it. There's really no point in me harvesting that because um, there's wild strawberries, lots of places that poison ivy probably isn't, right? Um, also ethically, we need to think about, especially if you are somebody who um, identifies as white, um, we have to remember that um, this land in Michigan, especially, um, and the surrounding areas that we live on, um, there were people here before us. Um, the Native Americans, this was their land. Um, and we have to remember that we have um, taken this land through colonization, our ancestors are if you're white, and we just don't want to take that um, mindset over to harvesting plants. So what I'm trying to say is you have to get out of the mentality that this land and the plants are just for my consumption and use and I can just take whatever I want. That's not appropriate in my um, opinion. Um, especially in foraging communities that can be um, kind of a mindset like this is all if I find it it's all mine and I'm not going to tell anybody else where it is well um, you know you have to remember that a lot of maybe what you're interested in harvesting or foraging um, is maybe food for animals that live around here um, also, we're not ever interested in, um, you know, affecting the environment in a way that maybe a plant won't, there's a woodpecker, continue to grow. Um, we have to like live in harmony with the land that we are on and understand the way that plants grow and um, if, you know, it takes them like a trillium seven years to bloom versus something that comes up every year. Um, so it's important to know that information. Um, you can get really excited in the beginning when you're on this path and you find something that you know, um, that you were able to identify. That doesn't mean that you need to actually harvest it, right? Um, are there more ethical ways for you to harvest something? Can you grow it in your garden? <coughs> Excuse me. I grow a lot of things in my garden that I could find in the wild because one, it's more convenient. Two, you are able to see the plant through all seasons and get to like really know it more. And my identification is not going to be off because I know exactly where in my garden it is, right? Versus out in the wild, you know? Um, so just things to think about there. Um, also, like, you know, I can grow a lot more in my garden of something, especially if I need large quantities of it, than what I should take from the wild, right? Um, yeah, I think that's what I want to say. Um, these are some books that I recommend. I hope you can see them. This is Midwest Medicinal Plants by Lisa M. Rose. She lives in Grand Rapids, so she's a Michigander. And this, um, this is Medicinal Plants in our area. So this is a really good book 
to um, be able to take out and identify some plants. This is her Midwest foraging, also Lisa M. Rose. These are great when you're getting started. So this may have more like um, foraging type of plants. Um, and they're pretty cheap. They have a little bit of overlap, um, but I think they're both really good to have if you're on this journey. Um, and they're helpful to, like I said, help you start identifying things and she has some recipes and things like that. So I think that's um, what I wanna say. Um, oh, I do wanna add, um, you want to be aware of, um, Sorry, I just found the wood woodpecker. I got distracted. Um, when you are harvesting something, you get to the point that you know that it's 110% what you think it is, right? And you have a plan for what you're gonna do with it. Um, it's really important to um, be aware of the um, processing and how long that takes. So if I, um, harvesting wild strawberries there's not much processing there right I can just eat it right then and there right but maybe it's a plant that I need to take back to um, my house and I have to maybe cut it up or I have to blend it or you know how long is that gonna take some situations can be very tedious and take a really long time um, also, if you don't have plans to make medicine with that, you don't have your ingredients, maybe you need to make a, a, an extract, a tincture, and you don't have your vodka, but you just harvested a bunch of plants, um, you don't want them to go bad before you can use them, right? So we want to be, we don't want to over harvest what we can actually utilize. Um, if you do, we've all done it, you don't have to be perfect, compost it, give it back to the earth, don't throw it away, right? But um, just be aware of that. Um, your excitement can kind of get the best of you sometimes and um, you can just, you know, harvest a bunch of something and then not even be aware of all the work that it takes to actually utilize that, right? Um, what else? I think that's it. <laughs> so this is um, not just ethical harvesting, but just, you know, thoughts and things to be aware of when you're on your new journey. Um, oh, this is what I wanted to say. Please don't ever um, harvest something that you are not aware of its identification 100% and then take a picture of it and post it on like Facebook groups and ask, is this blah, blah, blah. Um, one, don't harvest something that you don't know what it is 110% and have a plan on what you're going to do with it, right? Um, but also, if you take that out of its growing environment and ask somebody to take a picture of it on your kitchen table, or ask somebody to identify it from a picture on your kitchen table, it's going to be harder for somebody to identify. Um, that goes back to that, like, I can just take whatever I want mentality and it's not going to affect anybody else. Um, I really like to take this like uh, an animism approach where, you know, um, all of nature is alive just like I am and I am not more important um, than, you know, the moss that's growing in front of me and that moss plays a role and uh, it likely plays a role that I don't even understand and I don't want to meddle with things unless I truly understand um, that I'm not going to do be doing a disservice to the area. So um, yeah, Plan ID apps and Facebook groups um, can be somewhat helpful but it's you're better off taking a picture of something growing in its environment and asking for help with ID um, so that you can get information about the environment, right? Uh, maybe somebody knows that in the season that you're taking the picture in, the plant shouldn't look that way, you know? Um, so yeah, just some like cautionary things uh, if you're on your um, plant path. 
Um, but I hope you like these videos and um, it's still cold out. My nose is running. It's almost spring, like three days. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to um, send me your questions. Thanks.